Hey guys, Will here. So you know when a sim racing wheel arrives in a hard shell like this that you're looking at a serious piece of kit. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at the VPG Stealth 290 millimeter sim racing wheel. Now it's definitely one of the most interesting and striking designs that we've looked at in a sim racing wheel to date here at Boosted Media. And in addition to its very interesting physical appearance, it also has some really interesting features which we're gonna be unpacking today. Now a complex and feature rich wheel like this one can often mean a rather complex and frustrating setup process. So we're gonna be unpacking all the things that you need to know about this wheel today from the driving experience of course all the way through to build quality user experience and everything in between so let's get started So to kick things off today, firstly, a big thank you to VPG for sending across their stealth wheel for us to check out today. Now, one of the things we love to do here at Boosted Media is cross compare against some other wheels that are available on the market too, to see where the sweet spot might be for you. So it's important that you guys know that uh, all the wheels that we're looking at today were all sent to us under exactly the same conditions. So no third party has any sort of editorial control over anything we're saying today. It's purely just gonna be our own observations and our own opinions. And they definitely don't get to see the video before it goes live. So they'll be seeing it at exactly the same time as you guys do. Now, if you do decide you want to pick up any of the gear that you see in today's video, we'll have some affiliate links available down in the description below. Those are an awesome way of helping support our work here at Boosted Media at no additional cost to you guys if you wish to support us in that way. And we really do appreciate that. But let's kick on and get stuck into the VPG Stealth Sim Racing Wheel. So just quick, a little bit of background info on VPG. So it's a small two person team, Mike and Manny, both really, really lovely people. We've been dealing with them quite a bit over the last couple of months while we've been checking this wheel out. So yeah, basically their focus is on trying to build the most beautiful, most high quality sim racing wheels they possibly can. So it's kind of a no expense spared kind of affair here. So we do have very, very high expectations when it comes to the build quality and the overall, I guess, experience of using this wheel. So VPG have a variety of rims available. The Stealth being the cheapest of the lot at the moment, even though it is still very expensive. So this is the only one that doesn't have a screen. Kind of makes sense why it's a little bit cheaper than the others. But this guy comes in at 1,199 pounds. That's XVAT. So obviously make sure you check your local pricing, import duties, things like that. So very expensive wheels. We have the highest of the high when it comes to expectations in terms of build quality and overall user experience when we're looking at this wheel. And just so that you guys are aware as well, they do hand make and test all of these wheels themselves in house. So I'm certainly not expecting to come across any issues in today's video, but if we do, of course, we will let you guys know about those. So as you've already figured out by now, it does ship in this really nice Pelican style hard case. I don't think it is actually a genuine Pelican case, but it's still a really nice water, I, I think it's waterproof. Yeah, it does have a waterproof seal in there. Not that you really need a waterproof case for your steering wheel, but it's a cool case to have if you wanna end up using it for something else later on maybe. It does have just your standard kind of pluck foam internally here, so it's not a custom molded insert or anything like that, but still a really nice touch to have a hard case that you can move the wheel around with if you wanna take it to a mate's place or something like that. Now inside the case, you get a little piece of cardboard with a, I probably should put my finger over the password just in case. I don't know why they password protect their downloads, but they do, so you get a little here with a QR code and a password to download their uh, instruction manual, very detailed instruction manual as well. I'll just quickly show you that. I've printed it out here. So, you know, really nice dimensions and everything there. It goes through all the instructions for setting things up, mounting, and uh, yeah, really well presented. I'm expecting that the user experience here setting everything up with SimHub should be very, very straightforward and streamlined. Uh, inside the box also, you get a little bag here with a sticker and some mounting hardware, which we'll look at later on too. And also tucked away inside here is a coiled USB cable with a USB-A connection on one side. And what they're calling a, let me just check my notes here, a M12 industrial grade connector on the other side. So you can see it's got a screw type interface there. So that connection is key, it'll only go in one way. You've got four pins there, so RX, TX for data, and then positive and negative for your five volt DC. And so being a hardwired USB connection like that means that you can use this wheel with any wheelbase of your choice. If you're running it on a Fnatic base, just be mindful that you will either need a third party emulator or one of their official hubs to get the force feedback working. But any other base, you should be pretty well right to go. The wheel connects directly to your PC using SimHub as a software interface. You're not having to rely on any third party ecosystems or anything like that to get the wheel up and running. So let's go through some of the key features of this wheel now, starting with the basic input. So you've got a total of 29 inputs on this wheel. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight individual buttons here, two thumb encoders. So those send a pulse in either direction, three rotary encoders here on the face. We've got a five-way switch here as well. So it's not a seven-way funky style switch like what we have with the Fnatic and a couple of other wheels. So you don't have a rotary encoder function here. It's just like a little hat switch. You can go left, right, up, down, 
or push the button in. That is everything in terms of inputs on the face of the wheel. We spin it around now, and then we have a, an array of six paddles on the back here, four of which are digital. So you've got your two deployment paddles up the top here. You might use those for ERS and DRS, for example. You've got your two shifter paddles in the middle here, and then two analog paddles here, which you can map to pretty much any function you want. So a throttle and brake if you wish to do so, if you can't use pedals for some reason, uh, you can map it as a handbrake and a clutch, for example, or you can also map it as a dual stage clutch. And you do have the ability to make all the adjustments necessary directly from the wheel. So you don't have to alt tab and go into any software to do that. But we'll show you that a little bit later on too. You can see the mounting face on the back here as well. We'll take a look at that later. But spinning back around now, one of the big features that they're really kind of emphasizing with this wheel is the massive array of LED lights that you have on here too. So let's just quickly run through that. 37 individually controlled RGB LEDs on this wheel. So you've got an array of nine RGB LED lights here for your rev strip. These are all individually addressable and configurable in SimHub as you'll see later on. LED lights in all eight of the buttons on the face here too. Now, in addition to that, in the sides here, you'll also notice there's a little RGB LED strip too. So that allows you to actually have the wheel respond to things like flags in the game, telemetry data, things like that. Or if you want to, you can just also set it up as an ambient light. So it just glows whatever color you want it, whatever brightness you want, and just gives you that effect inside your sim. Now, as is always the case with any wheel that interfaces with Sim Hub directly like this one does, pretty much the sky's the limit. Your imagination is really the only limitation there when it comes to what you can and can't do with one of these wheels. So if you do happen to own one of these wheels, let us know in the comments down below what kind of creative and interesting things you've been able to come up with. So let's talk a little bit more now about the materials used throughout the wheel, the touch points, what it's actually like to hold and use this wheel. So you'll notice the entire face of this wheel is made of the same 6061 anodized CNC machined aluminum as we see around the rear. So you can see around here, we've got this five millimeter thick carbon fiber material. That's a forged carbon fiber, at least on the top layer that you can see there. You can't really see what the layers are in between, but I mean, it's, it's genuine carbon fiber, I guess is the main thing. And it's nice and thick too. Uh, so that actually extends throughout the entire shell here. So you can see it actually goes through the hand grips and everything. So everything's kind of connected and bolted into this piece of five mil thick carbon fiber. Then you've got the CNC machined aluminum rear housing here, all the shifter cages, everything there is all aluminum too. You've got five mil thick carbon fiber paddles. We'll talk about them in detail in just a minute because there is one thing I noticed about them which I was a little bit curious about. Uh, then we flip back around to the front, same 6061 aluminum all through here as well. So it does give it a really kind of, I guess, industrial feel to it overall. All the touch points are metal as well with the exception of just the plastic buttons that we see here, which are UV printed. So you can't actually remove or replace those, uh, those stickers on them because they aren't actually stickers. But what you do get inside the box is some replacement button caps, which you can replace with a few different common, uh, common functions. And they actually include a little guitar pick there too, that you can use to get in and pop the old cap off, and replace it with the one that you want. They also do include a couple of stickers here, which you can use to stick on these two buttons here, should you wish to label those. But they actually look quite nice with the red kind of shining through without any stickers on them at all, I think at least, as you guys can see from the footage here. So the little knob on our hat switch, the three rotary encoders and the two thumb encoders, all anodized aluminum, which is really nice to touch. And then if we flip it around here, let's just have a quick look at the quick release hub here that we have too. So we've got a standard 70 millimeter stud pattern on this carbon fiber panel here. And you can see they've got these aluminum standoffs. Now I was a little bit worried that we might see a little bit of twist throughout those, but didn't turn out to be the case at all. When I was driving, I you know gave it a good sort of spin around and twist and yeah, didn't notice any flex in there whatsoever. I pulled it up and down as well. Absolutely nothing to speak of whatsoever. The wheel deck on my rig was actually starting to flex a tiny bit before this was moving at all. So absolutely no issues at all with regards to rigidity of the quick release. And same can be said for the overall wheel as well. There was no creaking or any, I mean, there's no plastics really anywhere anyway. So you don't have the issues of creaking like you get on some of the cheaper wheels that we've looked at in the past. But also notice that there's not a whole lot of twist in the base of the wheel either, particularly down these bottoms areas here. Even on some of the more expensive wheels that we've tested in the past, there can be a little bit of twist there. And there is some, but certainly not enough that I would say it's a concern. If you compare it to something like the uh, grid engineering wheel, I didn't actually notice it when we did the review, but a couple of people mentioned it. And when I went back and looked at it again, I did actually notice there is quite a bit of twist if you kind of twist the wheel like this. And again, I don't really notice it when I'm driving, but 
it's definitely there and this wheel I've got to say is a lot more rigid than this one is so I think it's only fair to kind of call that out. So yeah with the choice of materials that they've used throughout here absolutely no issues with strength or rigidity creaking or anything like that whatsoever. Now the other cool thing that I like about this hub that they've used here with the quick release is what you can do is you can actually unbolt it from the back of the wheel and that's how you actually install the quick release. So you'll see here what we did was just unscrew the four bolts which hold this in place, take it off and then they give you some little nylon inserts as well as a nylon pad that actually sits between the carbon fiber face and your quick release and what that allows you to do is actually crank those bolts down and really kind of snug them up without so much risk of stripping out threads on the quick release. So you can see here the quick release just bolts onto the back here with a 70 mil stud pattern and yeah it's very very simple very easy to go together and uh, yeah it makes it a lot easier than trying to get a, uh, a allen key or a shifter or a wrench or something in behind and tighten it can be quite awkward on some wheels so being able to just take that off tighten everything down was really nice and just overall everywhere you look there's a lot of attention to detail just little things like that that really kind of stand out. Now speaking of things that stand out uh, first thing that I actually noticed when I picked up the wheel is uh, well there was two things actually first of all the smoothness and how nice these rubber grips feel. Now they don't feel like any other wheel that I at least have ever tested before. Now we do see a couple of different types of rubber grips used on a lot of high-end wheels and I've got a couple of different ones around me here just to kind of demonstrate for you. So starting off with the uh, with the GSI wheel here it looks pretty much exactly the same, at least it will on camera, but these have quite a tacky, grippy kind of feel to them. And what you find is your hands get quite clammy on them, quite sweaty, and it also has the tendency to pick up a lot of dead skin and dust and things like that, debris. So they don't feel really great with bare hands. Now, some people get along with them just fine, and like I can drive with it just fine, it doesn't really bother me, but they definitely do have that kind of sticky feel. And one of the things that I called out when we reviewed the Cube Controls CSX3 recently is that these have got a much smoother rubber surface on them. So they don't tend to pick up dirt and debris quite so much. They still got a good amount of squish to them overall. But yeah, I just, I prefer this material to what they use on the GSI wheel. Now the rubber that they've used here is incredibly smooth. Like your, your fingers just kind of glide over. It's hard to describe, but it almost feels like it's lubricated. Like it's really smooth and um, it doesn't really pick up any dirt and debris at all, which is really surprising, but it still has that nice amount of squish. So I don't know what material they've actually used for this, but whatever it is, I hope that other people figure it out too and start using it on their wheels because it really is absolutely brilliant. I absolutely love it. It's far and away better than any other material I've ever used on any other wheel for using with bare hands at least. It just has that smooth feel, but still has the squishiness. And yeah, it's kind of like having your cake and eating it too. So I think they've really done a nice job there. The other thing that I noticed straight away is the weight distribution of this wheel. Now, that is one thing that they called out in their marketing material. So I was expecting for that to kind of be noticeable, but the wheel is quite hefty, comes in at about 1.6 kilograms, nowhere near as heavy as something like the GSI wheel or the Porsche wheel. Those are both actually over two kilograms, but the weight in this wheel feels quite low down. So what it tends to try to do is kind of balance itself and recenter itself a little bit better than some of the other wheels that we've tested in the past. Now, it's again, not really something that you notice overly when you're driving. If you're on a weaker wheelbase, then maybe, but I think for the kind of people that are gonna be spending this kind of money on a wheel, you're probably not gonna be running under about sort of a 10 Newton meter wheelbase anyway, I would imagine. So I don't really think that's gonna be a factor for most people, but it is a very, very well balanced wheel if that's the kind of thing that is important to you. 290 millimeters as well is a pretty good compromise for Formula and GT style driving. I tend to go for 300 millimeter for something that's an all rounder wheel, but with this kind of a form factor, you're not gonna be trying to drive rally cars or anything like that with this anyway. So so I think 290 millimeter is a good choice there. And yeah, look, overall the wheel is just extremely comfortable to hold and grip. When you go around corners as well, it doesn't sort of grip up on your thumbs or rub anywhere. There's no sharp edges anywhere. It's all completely smooth. And yeah, very, very, very easy to operate. The controls that are intended to be around your thumbs can be a little bit of a reach. I would prefer if these buttons were a little bit closer. One of the things I did mention in their literature is that everything was kind of designed to be within a thumb's reach, obviously, other than the buttons on the front face. But you can see in this driving footage, I do have to reposition my hands to touch the six buttons on the outer edges of the wheel. I don't have to, to touch the top button and the thumb encoders though. So look, overall, ergonomically, I'm really happy with it. I think that it is well laid out and well designed. It is, you know, rather minimalistic. There isn't a whole lot of functionality on the wheel in terms of inputs compared to some other wheels that we've
we looked at at the price point. But I think that all the basics are pretty much there. I guess the two things that I would call out there are the fact that the rotary encoders on the front face don't have a multi-position switch mode. They are just rotary encoders. That means that the position of the switch won't correlate directly to a setting inside the SIM. So if you exit and then come back in again and you've started on, say, engine map number three, then you know zero is going to become three and then it's going to wind up so three then becomes six in the game and so forth. So that is one thing that we do see on a lot of other wheels that we don't have here. The other thing that I would like to see here that we don't have is uh, pulse width modulation adjustment for the rotary encoders themselves. Now, the rotary encoders do have nice clearly defined clicks in each position. So you're not going to be at too much risk of, you know, bumping it by accident and not knowing where you are. But having that adjustment for the pulse width modulation just to make sure that you're able to fine tune it to, you know, correlate inside the game exactly how you like it is a nice touch that we have seen on a couple of other wheels. Now, we did mention this earlier, but just to remind you again, these aren't push buttons. Now, in terms of feel on the other buttons, let's start with the thumb encoders. Again, those have got really nice, clearly defined detents or clicks in each position too. They're not super, super snappy, so there's a little bit of a kind of spring-loaded action there. You can feel it kind of roll into the next position, but then it has a decent sort of clunk to it rather than a snap to it. So if we compare to the uh, grid engineering, well, actually, they feel like they're probably exactly the same encoders. They may well be. If you compare to something like a cube controls wheel, these ones are a little bit more snappy in each position. But yeah, I, I don't think that um, that's really gonna be a, a selling point for any one wheel over another. And the push buttons themselves have a nice snappy feel to them. There's a little bit of squish there before they activate, but you can hear they've got a nice kind of snap to them, a nice positive click. If you compare again to a cube controls wheel, these are just a little bit more snappy. They don't really have any squish on them before they activate. So it's purely just a digital on off kind of press. If you compare to something like a Fnatic wheel, for example, obviously a lot cheaper. Those are actually a little bit more similar to these. So they have a little bit more squish to them, but not quite such a positive click in each position. The uh, Forte wheels are a lot more snappy. And then, you know, we don't need to go through every single wheel, but you know, the point is that they've got a nice squishy feel to them, but also a nice positive click. So I don't think anybody's gonna have any issues with those. And then let's spin around to the paddles on the back. So you can see the large neodymium magnets here for the top paddles and the shifter paddles. They've got a nice positive snap to them as well. You can kind of drag them a little bit. So they're not quite as snappy as some other wheels, but again, I think they're a good balance here. I can't see anybody having an issue with those at all. One thing I did notice is they are using little micro switches internally. A lot of other wheels these days are using Hall Effect sensors. Now those have the, I guess, advantage you could say of being contactless. I mean, they're, they're nice sealed high quality units at least. So I don't think they're gonna be a, uh, a risk of, you know, taking in dirt and debris and failing over time or anything like that. So I don't really see that to be an issue. You can also see for the analog paddles at the bottom here, they are using rotary potentiometers. Now they are again, sealed units. So I don't see that being a problem, but again, we'll just have to sort of see how they stand the test of time. Again, if you have one of these wheels, let us know if you have run into any dramas there whatsoever. But yeah, the analog paddles have a good amount of throw on them there, and that is also adjustable. We can actually wind in that little screw on the back there to reduce the throw, should we wish to do so. So a good amount of adjustability there. On the backs of the paddles here, you've also got a little slot so you can actually move each paddle in and out to adjust it into the position that you want. Now, one observation that I had with these carbon fiber paddles here, you can see if we have a look on the side, they are five millimeters thick. Now, I noticed that they do have a little bit of flex to them. And now again, it's not enough that I think people are gonna be overly concerned just when they're driving, but I am a little bit concerned that these may snap off a little bit more easily than some other ones. Now, if we get it back around on the front, there's actually a groove that's been cut out or a notch that's been cut out so that the carbon fiber paddle can actually sit flush with the aluminum stem, I guess you could call it, that comes out of the cage. So what that means is that where the material actually interfaces is actually thinner than the five millimeter thick carbon. Now, if we have a look at something like a uh, cube controls wheel, for example, you can see what they've done here is just put the carbon on top of the other layer. So there's no flex there literally whatsoever. I can't make that flex at all, even though it's actually, I think this is four mil thick carbon as opposed to the five mil thick there. So I am just a little bit concerned that if, particularly if you have that push all the way out, you've only got a couple of mil of carbon there which is actually forming the interface and that could potentially snap off. So again, if you if you do have one of these wheels, let us know if you've had that problem, but particularly with the, with the analog paddles on the bottom. Now you're not likely to pull on those as hard, but you can see, we'll get it on the side here and get a shot for you. But where that bolts on, 
you can see the material thickness is very, very, very thin. So my concern would be that it could potentially just break along that front edge there. Remembering again that carbon fiber is incredibly strong, but only really sort of in one direction. So if you twist it or if you bend it a way that it's not designed to actually have that strength, then it can shatter quite easily. So yeah, a little bit of an interesting design choice there. I'm not an engineer, so I'm not really one to say whether it's a good or a bad design. It's just something that I observed and I thought it was worth pointing out because it's a little bit different from what we've seen on a lot of other wheels out there. Now, one of the things that we normally try to do is take a look inside of these wheels to see what the internal build quality is like. Now, I did take all the bolts out of this, but I just couldn't get it to come apart. Don't know whether it had been glued or something like that, but we didn't want to risk breaking it, so we weren't able to take a look internally this time around. Now, we mentioned earlier that you can map these analog paddles to be whatever function you want inside the sim, but you can also use it as a dual stage clutch. So the way they've sorted out the adjustment for the bite point clutch here is quite clever. It means you don't have to alt tab out of your game. You can do it directly from the wheel. So what you do is you push down the little stalk on the five-way switch here for five seconds, and you'll notice the light configuration will change on the screen. Then all you need to do is hold down one side of the clutch, and that will show you where your current threshold point is. So you can either do it through the game control panel or just be inside the game and actually look at the clutch input as a percentage in the bar. And then from there, what you can do is adjust that threshold using the three knobs here. So we go from a coarse adjustment all the way through to a fine adjustment. The top one increases or decreases by 1% increments. The left hand one does 5% increments and then the right hand one does 10% increments. So you can just wind it in exactly to where you want. Then to exit back out of calibration mode, all you need to do is just push that stalk in again for five seconds and it will take you back into normal mode. Now that's also the way that you make adjustments to the clutch calibration too. We don't really need to go through that in the video because it's all very clearly outlined. And it's not likely something that you're ever gonna have to adjust more than once anyway. Okay, so wheel is up on the rig now. I wanted to run you through the uh, process for getting this set up because as I said earlier, there's a big focus here on streamlining everything, making it as simple as possible. And uh, SimHub can actually be quite complex as you guys have seen with some of the other wheel reviews that we've done in the past. So we're gonna plug it in first. Hopefully I can get the plug the right way around. The oh my goodness, it actually went in the right way around the first time. That never happens. Okay, so we've got SimHub open and running here on our PC. There's a link to download SimHub if you don't already have it in the uh, instruction manual that you would have downloaded for the wheel already. Uh, SimHub, if you're not familiar with it, massively powerful piece of software. It can do more things than you can shake a stick at. It can run motion rumble things. It can run wind simulations. It can run dashes. What we're gonna be relying on it for here is controlling all our LED profiles and those details. So we're gonna go to devices. We're gonna click on add new device. And this is a new feature they added probably about a year ago now in SimHub where they've actually got pre-cooked profiles for a lot of the sim racing hardware out there. So SimHub is a free piece of software to use that does limit the refresh rate of the data or the sample rate of the data that you get through. Not really gonna be so important for a device like this, but if you're running dashes and things like that, you definitely do wanna have the faster refresh rate. But not, nonetheless, I would recommend making the donation and paying for the software. It's only a couple of bucks and uh, whatever the developer of this software really does uh, his name is whatever, by the way. I'm not just saying whatever. Uh, he really does deserve your support. It's an amazing piece of software. And I hope that these companies that are getting these pre-cooked profiles in here are actually paying for the privilege now because he definitely deserves it. But we scroll out down to the bottom here. We've got a pre-cooked profile for VPG Sim Stealth. We're gonna click OK. And straight away, you can see the wheel fires up. And that is actually really cool. You can see the lights firing out of the sides here actually glows across the grips and creates this kind of really funky looking profile. So happy to see that it just kind of worked immediately here. That hasn't been the experience with some other wheels, even with these pre-cooked profiles. So that all seemed to just work straight away. So then you can see we've got an adjustment for our brightness of the LEDs. I might just leave that at default, but that is, as I often say of wheels, thermonuclear bright. That's more, more bright than anybody I think is gonna need at 100%. We might wind that back down to roughly where it was, I think. Buttons lighting as well. So you've got independent control for the brightness of the buttons. And that actually goes really dim. Some of the wheels that we've tested in the past, uh, the minimum setting is still actually quite bright, but that scales really nicely all the way from thermonuclear to pretty much off. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna set it back to about where it was again. 
And then we can also tell it whether we want the lights to be on only when we're driving or whether we want them on all the time as we have them here. We're gonna just leave them on all the time though for now. And then we've also got the ability to adjust or manage different profiles too. So a lot of different profiles get shared in places like Discord, uh, race department, places like that. So you can definitely check out any additional profiles that people have created. There's some really, really uh, creative people in the SimHub community. So I'm sure over time there'll be a array of stuff that gets created for this. But if we go into the uh, edit profile tab here for the RGB LEDs. So what this allows you to do is basically create different effects that can be triggered by whatever telemetry data you want inside the sim. So just to give you a quick idea of how these effects work, if we open up the test data dialog here, let's quickly trigger the RPM gauge so you can see as we go through the individual segments light up. And again, these are individually addressable RGB LED. So you can change these to be whatever color you want. This is just the default profile as it's pre-configured. And uh, again, it was really nice that all of this is just working completely out of the box. I literally had to do nothing to get this working, which certainly can't be said for other wheels. We'll switch that back off again for now. This is where, this is the effect that I'm really liking. So for example, pit limiter, you can see now it's flashing between red and blue on the sides there. So it actually lights up really nicely on your hands there. You're not gonna miss that. It's a really cool effect and something I've never seen done on a wheel before projecting outwards like that. So that's really funky. And then as I was saying before, you can also set up spotters and flags as well. So for example, if you've got a car on the left, it'll light up only on the left-hand side, right-hand side and so forth. But to give you an idea here, green flag, you can see it's flashing green, blue flag. We'll switch off green, there you go. There's blue flag, yellow flag, white flag, what do they do for black flag? <laughs> Blue, okay, that is really cool. So yeah, it's a really great visual representation that you can see in your peripheral vision without the need to sort of, you know, take your eyes off the road to see what's going on, which is a really nice touch. Okay, so I've been driving with the VPG Stealth wheel now for a number of weeks, interchanging with a lot of the other wheels that you guys have seen in today's video too. Now, from a driver's perspective, I've got to say this wheel has a lot of things that are going for it. In terms of the overall just feeling of the wheel in your hands, the touch point, the quality there, it's absolutely outstanding. In particular, the, uh, the material that they've used for these rubber grips is just absolutely beautiful to hold. And every time you get in, you grab onto the wheel, it just feels really nice, really premium, and something that you're just gonna feel proud to have in such a prominent position on your sim ring. Now, obviously, the visual design here is quite polarizing. Some people are gonna absolutely hate the design here. Some people are gonna love it. And I mean, that's just purely a subjective thing. So it's not really something that we need to cover in a review video. I don't really think if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. And it's really as simple as that. But yeah, look, in terms of the functionality that's here, everything works really well. I've got to comment again on just the ease of use as well, because I know that is one thing that they were focusing on here. And I think they've really done an awesome job of achieving that. From the moment we plugged it in, we loaded the profile in SimHub, everything just worked. We didn't have to spend any time stuffing around, getting things working, didn't have any issues with drivers or anything like that. So that was really, really, really a big positive too. All the buttons and dials have a really nice feel to them. And look, in terms of the lighting, I did actually find that those projection LED modules on the sides, as I'm gonna call them, did actually add to the overall driving experience. It's not something that I've ever experienced on any other wheel before. And I did find that in particular, the flag LEDs, so having them flash different colors, depending on what was going on with the track status, was something that was genuinely beneficial to driving. Because you kinda, of, as I mentioned before, you see it in your peripheral vision without having to actually take your eyes off the road to look at it. And that's one thing that I often find using wheels that have integrated screens, is that a lot of the time, you're not actually looking at the screen. So unless you actually intentionally take your eyes off the road and look at the screen, you don't really have a good idea what's going on. Whereas with something like this, it actually flashes light around. It just makes it a little bit more easy to, I guess, be aware of what's going on around you without necessarily being distracted from the task at hand, which is of course driving fast. Another thing I really liked was the red flashing lights on either side for the spotter too. I found that was quite useful. And yeah, I just think that overall, everything that it sets out to do, it does a really good job of achieving. But having said all those nice positive things, there definitely were a couple of frustrations too. One thing that did drive me bonkers was having the little hat switch in the middle here. I didn't really miss not having the seven way, so not having 
having the rotary encoder function on there. It's not something that I find I do use often on the wheels that do have that functionality, but having it in the middle here was quite frustrating. It meant if I wanted to quickly thumb through black box displays or something like that in iRacing, for example, then I was having to take my eyes off the road, take my hand off the wheel to actually make those changes rather than just sort of being able to flick from the sides. And if you have a look at something like the Cube Controls F Pro, for example, this has actually got two seven-way switches, so these do have the rotary encoder functionality on either side, and you can actually easily hold that with your hand and reach that when you're driving. And what that means is you can quickly thumb through without having to significantly adjust your hand position or take your eyes completely off the road to see what's going on. Now, it may seem like a really small thing to pick on, but look, the reason I'm calling this out is because, you know, we have a lot of wheels here in the studio, and that was the one thing that kind of made me err towards picking a different wheel to drive with a lot of the time, simply because I just didn't want to deal with that frustration. So I think for that practical reason, it is an important thing to point out. So I think what it boils down to is this is gonna be one of those wheels that you see and either like the look of or don't like the look of. And if you don't like the look of it, you're probably not gonna be considering it to purchase in the first place. So I think really the important point to get across here is that you know if you like the look of it, you're not gonna be disappointed with the overall functionality and user experience. It does a really good job of achieving the things that it sets out to achieve. But I do also want to compare against a couple of other options which we have tested here at Boosted Media. Now there are obviously other wheels on the market as well and I definitely recommend you check those out too. We haven't reviewed absolutely everything here, but I just wanted to quickly bring in a couple of other wheels. So firstly, the F Pro wheel from Cube Controls. Now this is probably the wheel that most closely matches this wheel in terms of the overall functionality that is provided here. Now there are a couple of things here which we have in addition to what we have here. There's a couple of features here that we don't have here as well. But the important thing to note here is that the F Pro is significantly cheaper than the Stealth wheel is. So just a couple of things to point out here quickly. Uh, the probably biggest feature here that we don't have on the Stealth wheel is the ability to connect this to your PC directly via Bluetooth. So if you want completely wireless operation, then that is an option. Now, obviously your PC will need to have Bluetooth connectivity. You'll need to be able to have an antenna relatively close to your SIM rig as well. I personally haven't had any issues with this wheel dropping out, but a lot of people do prefer to run this wired anyway. Now it has a magnetic connection on the back here, which is used to charge the battery or connect via USB if you don't want to use the Bluetooth functionality, but it doesn't rely on any particular SIM racing ecosystem. So you don't have to use it with a SIM cube. You can use it with any base that you want and it will work because it's connecting to your PC directly by Bluetooth rather than through the protocol provided by your wheelbase. Now, one important thing to note is that uh, Cube Controls have recently added SIM hub integration with this wheel as well, which means you can do pretty much all the same things that you can do on the stealth wheel here. You can have the LEDs for each button react to what's going on in the SIM telemetry wise and do all those kinds of things. Now, it doesn't have the same projection system here. So if that's something that you really like, then that is one advantage here. It also doesn't have the RPM LED strip across the top either. So again, if that's important to you, that is a consideration. Another thing with the F Pro is that it is using Hall Effect uh, contactless sensors for the shifters and the analog paddles, whereas we have micro switches and rotary potentiometers over here. Again, I don't really see that being an issue because they are high quality sealed units, but if that does bother you, that is one thing that you can consider over here. But look, in, I just think ergonomically, this wheel is a little bit better as well. I do really like the fact that we've got two of those seven-way switches over here with the F Pro. That is something that I do rely on pretty regularly. And another thing that I do find that I generally rely on pretty heavily with this wheel is the four thumb encoders. I map those two, as you can see here, my bias, my ABS, my traction control, and my engine map. And I do use those quite frequently. Now, the overall build quality here with the F Pro and the presentation isn't on the same level as it is with the Stealth wheel. So it's important that you guys are aware of that. Just little things like the fact that we've got those UV printed button caps on the Stealth wheel, as opposed to stickers, which do have a tendency to float around and come off on all the Cube Controls wheels that we've tested in the past. I'm also personally not a huge fan of the plastic shrouds that they use on Cube Controls wheels, but all of that is very subjective. So yeah, just wanted to point that out because this wheel is significantly cheaper than what this is. And from a core functionality point of view, LEDs aside, this does offer a little bit more than what the Stealth wheel does. Now we also have the CSX3 from Cube Controls as well, which comes in actually at a similar kind of price, depending on where you are in the world, uh, to the Stealth wheel. This obviously has the 
addition of the uh, of the display as well. Now, again, this may or may not be something that you use. I actually don't find that I spend a lot of time looking at a display when I'm driving because I'm focusing on the road. But if you're driving the kinds of cars that don't have integrated dashes in the sim, then this can be something that you will rely on quite heavily. And you can see this wheel also has the addition of flag LEDs as well as the RPM strip as well over the F Pro. Important to note though, that this doesn't have the Bluetooth connectivity that we have with the F Pro. So another wheel for your consideration at around the same kind of price point. And then one more wheel that I feel should be included in this comparison too. And there will be other wheels as well that we haven't tested here at Booster Media. So this is by no means completely exhaustive, but the Formula Pro Elite from Gomez is another one that I would also consider. Now, this doesn't have any thumb encoders, which really pisses me off about this wheel. That's the one thing that I really, really wish it did have. And they do have a new, uh, new upgraded wheel now, which I haven't had a look at yet, which does have a lot of that functionality. But again, we've got the integrated dash here, uh, slightly higher overall build quality and presentation than what we have with the Cube Controls wheel. That is one thing that I really love about this. It is a much heavier and bulky wheel overall though, wider diameter than what we have as well. So those are all considerations. And again, you can see the full review of this wheel if you are interested in it. So look, at the end of the day, for me personally, with my subjective preferences, I would have a hard time justifying the extra spend for something like this over something like the F Pro from Cube Controls. I just feel like that has a little bit more of what I'm after in a sim racing wheel than what this does. But again, it is a purely subjective thing. I think they've done a really good job here. I do really, really love those grips. So I keep on coming back to it, but that is one thing that I think is absolutely outstanding about this wheel. But as I said earlier, I think if you like the visual design of this wheel, you're not going to be disappointed with it. I think it's something that you will enjoy racing with. And beyond that, I think honestly, it really just comes down to how much you're willing to spend to get that kind of build quality. I think that this probably is a little bit beyond what is necessary on a sim rig. And that's a, that's a whole nother topic. We probably actually need to do a video about where that sweet spot is in terms of price to performance and build quality, because there is so much out there on the market now. It can be quite confusing, but yeah, look, if you're after a really, really high quality, no expense spared kind of wheel that just does what it does and does what it does extremely well, then I think that this is an excellent choice. And really it's as simple as that at the end of the day. So I really hope that today's video has helped you out. Please leave a thumbs up if it has. Consider subscribing to the channel as well if you aren't already for more reviews like this one. And as I said earlier, if you do want to pick up any of the hardware that you've seen in today's video, we've got some links down in the description below, which are an awesome way of helping support our work here at Boosted Media at no additional cost to you. So thanks very much for watching guys, and we will see you again very soon. Bye.